Okay, so we're going to start off with this graphic, and you can see I've got the treetop and the trunk. From here, if you select your graphic, and you go over to your um, menus over there, hold the shift key down and go to the applique. So holding the shift key, you click on the applique button, which I do right there, and what you see is it'll automatically create the applique for you. From here, you can go into the properties and set the different properties. These are just shifting which side the applique is on. You can also go into the pull comp, add a little bit of pull compensation, which will make the lines a little bit more bold, fix your densities. Um, 4.2 is a little bit high from the applications I like to sew in. And do the same conversion for the treetop. You hold the shift key down and click on the applique button, and then you can go in and change your densities, the percentage along there, um, as well as your pull compensation. And update your colors. Now if you notice my applique only has two color changes so I can fix that by going into the properties and enabling the color change. And this will let me have a dye line as well as a zigzag and then my satin. And I've got it. But if I zoom in on this bottom of the tree trunk what you'll notice is I've got a pretty heavy satin stitch overlap which will show up under the fabric. So if I explode the tree bottom into its parts and then take the satin stitch I can mark it by adding two points at the spot I want to split it, and then go click on that split icon over the bottom left. And then I can just delete the top part of the satin. Now you won't have that big bulky um, underlay there of the satin stitches. So here you can see it trace out. I have my single line go down to lay the applique piece down. It does a zigzag, and then the final stitch is a satin. And then it goes back and does the same thing for the top three separate color changes. And that is an applique tree in well, about two minutes. So if you'd like to update your design so that you have both a placement and a tack down stitch, what you would do is first go to your design and explode it into its parts. So you click on the applique, you right click, go down to operations, convert to wireframe, and that will break it out of an applique. Now I can go to color one and then duplicate that, which will create a duplicate dye line. Give it a different color so I can have a color change. Do the same one for the first color, the green. I would duplicate it and give it another color. Now if you look at what we have, I've got a, dye, a placement stitch, a tack down stitch, and you can see the tack down there. I would then have a zigzag and then my satin stitch. After that I'd have another placement stitch for the treetop tack down stitch for the treetop, my zigzag to hold it in place, and then my satin stitch. Now if I want, I can rearrange this to do all the satin at the end by moving the tree down. So how that would run is I'd have a placement, a tack down, and a zigzag, a placement, a tack down, and a zigzag again, right there. And then I would do my satin stitches with the tree bottom and the tree top. And there you have it. Now if you want to save off your files to use on a cutter, you can open up your file, grab the piece, and you copy it, and you paste, and from here you can save as an SVG file. And you do this with your applique piece. I call them die lines, so DL and then the name of the trunk. So go back to your file, find the other applique piece, there it is, I'm going to go edit, copy, File, New, Edit, Paste, and then a File, Save As. Go find the SVG format, and to give it a file name, I have one here, and I'm going to overwrite it. Now I'm going to go open that up so you can see what it created. And what you'll see is, I've got a vector line over here, and when I click on it, there's my shape. And I can send that to a plotter or cutter um, to be cut out my applique pieces ahead of time.